A very warm welcome to you all on this Palm Sunday to Rothley Parish Church as we gather together to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to hear his word and to bring before him uh, the needs of the world. Uh, Palm Sunday uh, so often marks the beginning of the Easter holidays for our schools and children. That's very much the case this year. And I know uh, that the, the schools just locally have just broken up and your Easter holidays have just begun. And so it's a great way to begin the Easter holiday, to gather together, uh, to worship our Lord Jesus Christ, and to remember the events of that first Palm Sunday when our Lord Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem, acclaimed and praised by the crowds. When Jesus came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. And they shouted together, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Well, we're going to begin by singing uh, in praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, ride on, ride on in majesty as all the crowds Hosanna cry. It may be uh, for some of the children at home, uh, you've, you've got um, one of your palm crosses from last year. You may want to just wave that while you sing this great hymn together. So let's sing in praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, let's pray. On Palm Sunday, the crowds worshipped Jesus. Yet on Good Friday, they shouted for him to die. Let us, who also worship him today, confess that we sometimes reject him, and so come and ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, you come to us in peace but we shut the door of our mind against you. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us in humility, but we prefer our own proud ways. In your mercy, 
forgive us and help us. You come to us in judgment, but we cling to our familiar sins. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. You come to us in majesty, but we will not have you to reign over us. In your mercy, forgive us and help us. Together we say, Lord, forgive our empty praise, fill our loveless hearts, come to us and make our lives your home forever. Amen. And the collect, the special prayer for this Sunday, a uh, prayer that will be being said in many Anglican churches across, uh, across the world, not just in this country. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility, and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. But as we look ahead to Holy Week and Easter, we're going to use a special creedal statement, one based on what St Paul wrote uh, to the church in Philippi, reckoning, recognising how far Jesus went down to the cross before he was highly exalted on the day of resurrection. So let us affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Well, as we've been going through this time of lockdown, we've been um, just uh, having a brief chat with some uh, individuals about what's been their experience of, as living as Christians through this time of lockdown. And uh, today we're going to meet uh, James, one of our students, who's away in Bournemouth, but looking forward to coming home shortly to spend Easter back in Rothley with his family. So let's meet James. Well, welcome, James, and thank you for joining us uh, from Bournemouth. Um, it's, it's, it's really good to see you. And uh, we've been doing these interviews. I know you've seen some of them where we've been thinking about what it's like to live as a Christian through the various times of lockdown. Um, I know you're on your second year doing paramedic science and it kind of turned out exactly as you expected. So can you just tell us briefly, you know, what you've been up to during these various long, uh, various lockdowns? Yeah, so I've been um, quite fortunate. I've been able to work throughout the, the, the main lockdowns uh, with South Central Ambulance Service. So back in April, I moved back down here, um, lived by myself for five months. Um, it's the cleanest and quietest the house has ever been. Um, <laughs> That I've been able to do that uh, and, and carry on with placement. Um, thankfully, I've not been too badly affected. My degree has obviously gone online, but I've been able to have placement still. So that's, I'm very grateful for that. And what, yeah. what have been your main concerns and hopes? Um, I suppose my biggest concerns have been um, how long lockdown is going to carry on for um, and, and getting COVID myself. I, I should think, you know, I'm with patients on an almost daily basis, many of whom have COVID um, or are very unwell with COVID. And so I suppose it's always in the back of my mind that I could I could get COVID. Um, and I was, I'm always conscious of the fact that I'm a, a relatively fit and healthy 20 year old um, lad 
but then my concern was passing on to someone else, passing on to other patients or, or family members. Um, so that was always looming over me, I imagine. Um, I said my biggest hopes have been uh, the vaccine. Uh, that's a great hope for many people. Um, and I, I, I hope that that lifts the lockdown. It's the one thing that alleviates the lockdown. Uh, many friends and family and, and patients as well have, have had been very effective, uh, very um, negatively affected mentally by um, lockdowns. Um, I've been to many patients who have cited lockdown as the reason that they have self-harmed or taken mm -hmm. an overdose. And I suppose with lockdown being um, lifted, that is able to allow people to uh, interact with family and friends again, socialise and improve their general well-being. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and in what ways has your Christian faith um, been affected over these past uh, over this past year? Yeah, so... I mean, you've seen I'm all sure. sorts of situations and so on. Yeah. 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 So I suppose as, as, as phenomenal as the uh, YouTube services have been from Rotary Church, um, I've obviously not been able to attend in person to a church down here in Bournemouth uh, for almost a year now. Um, and I suppose that's always a great um, catalyst for my faith, being at a church and, mm -hmm. and having support from everyone. Um, so I suppose that's been a big challenge. Um, and also, like I previously mentioned, I've been to many patients who have been, been very, very unwell, uh, many of whom have died. Um, and I suppose having a strong Christian faith um, is something that is, is supported me through that. You know, I often say a prayer for the family um, of mm -hmm. a patient that's died in my head uh, as we're sort of clearing away. Um, but I, I am very conscious of the fact that I am fortunate enough to have uh, a strong faith. Um, and that definitely supports me and, and helps me um, when I'm in situations that are upsetting to a lot of people. And I mean, how, I mean, have you actually seen God at work? You know, when, you, I mean, I guess you've been in these situations and you've been with families and obviously mm. spent time on your own as well. Um, you know, have you seen God at work uh, during this past year in your life and, it, and actually in the lives of those that you're sort of, I suppose, treating and working, um, um, uh, your colleagues you're working with? Yeah, I suppose, yeah, that's quite a good question, actually. Um, seeing God at work in many different ways. Personally, I've been fortunate enough to get back involved with Blaithwaite, um, and, and that's something I'm very much looking forward to doing in the summer. But with patients as well, it's, it's often hard when you have a patient that you know is going to die, and you're mm -hmm. taking them in hospital to die, um, and you're with them and their husband or wife the last time they're ever going to see each other alive. Um, because they can't come into hospital with, with the patients. Um, and so that's obviously very upsetting for, for us as, as an ambulance crew and for the, the patient and their family. But, but a lot of patients have a strong faith. Um, mm. And I've been with lots of patients that are, are not as scared as you'd imagine, um, or, or relatives that are very much at peace, um, knowing that although they're going to die, um, that they have a strong faith. They know that they're going on to a much better life um, and that's very comforting for me to, to be able to see that and and see God at work in that way I, I suppose. Yeah that's great um, and what would you like us to be praying for you you're looking ahead to, I mean obviously I know you'll be home briefly at Easter but just generally mm. looking ahead um, what would you like us to be praying for you? So the um, the, the constant uh, stream of uni work um, mm. and assignments and exams and all the, all the, the, the joy that that brings <laughs> um, placements as well um, I'm, I'm back on placement for the next few weeks so I hope I get a good array of different patients that challenge me um, with, with skills and things like that but like I said Blaithwaite as well I, I very much am looking forward to that um, we've been given the, the green light to stop planning for that this year um, for mm -hmm. a full in-person event so that should be great for and um, I think that's something that I'm very much looking forward to in the summer um, everything of being us, I suppose, just that, that that continues to to be in the pipeline, and we get loads of young people involved with that. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah well, I know Blaithwaite. I mean, as a, as a as a Christian camp for young people, is one that a lot of people from Rothley have enjoyed, and you know, we mm. hope they will continue to um, people from across the country. So, yeah, we'll certainly yeah. be praying for that and the other things you mentioned. Well, thanks very much very for much. spending this time with us and uh, sharing thanks that. For having me. I don't I don't know if I'll see you when you're home at Easter. Um, no. You know, if you're walking around the block, we may bump into each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, but uh, thanks very much, and uh, hope uh, the rest of the week goes well.
Okay. Thank Likewise. you. Likewise. Right. Thank you. Now, Margaret's going to lead us in our prayers. And following that, Kath's going to read from Mark's Gospel, the account of that very first Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, we come before you with thanksgiving as we celebrate Palm Sunday. It's the day we commemorate your entry into Jerusalem on a mission to pay for our sins and give us eternal life. You knew the anguish awaiting you, and you still proceeded so that your Father's will would be fulfilled. Your love and obedience saved us, and now we are the children of God. Thank you. Amen. We give thanks that so many people have been able to receive the vaccination to protect them from COVID and that the number of infections is falling. We pray for patience as we anxiously wait for the restrictions to be lifted. We long for a time when we can all meet in church to worship and praise the Lord together. We put our trust and hope in you, Lord, and we thank you for your strength and support during these difficult times. Let us remember in our prayers and offer to the Lord those of our church family who are facing particular difficulties at this time. Those who are anxious, afraid or troubled by the economic situation. And we pray for those who are sick. Lord, hold them in your loving, healing hands. We think of those who are alone, struggling with isolation and loneliness. Lord, may they know your presence. Pour your blessings upon those who are bereaved and mourn the loss of loved ones. May they know your peace. Lord, comfort all who suffer. Amen. Lord, on this Palm Sunday, you were given a hero's welcome as one who was going the way of the crowd. But you had chosen the way of the cross and the applause was short-lived. Keep clear before us the vision of your calling. May we never be diverted from the way you have chosen for us but follow in the steps of you, our crucified and risen Lord, to whom be all glory, Lord and honour. Amen. May the blessing of God flood our lives, sweeping away disappointment and regret, and replacing them with contentment, joy and peace. Now let us join together in the words our Father taught us as we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from Mark, chapter 11, reading from verse 1 to 25. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethage, and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, 
which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him, the Lord needs it and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway, and they untied it. Some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything. But since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The next day, as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves, because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple area and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, is it not written, my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers? The chief priests and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, they went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. I tell you the truth, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive him so that your father in heaven may forgive you your sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hosanna to the son of David. Let's join those crowds as we sing in praise of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are the King of glory. You are the Prince of peace. And then David's going to be speaking to us from that passage.
us have a word of prayer as we begin. Lord Jesus, you showed the world your princely power by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Help us in the next few minutes to understand the humility of your journey to the cross so that we might experience the glory of your victory over sin and death. We ask it for your name's sake. Amen. Well, normally on Palm Sunday we'd be together in church singing praises to Jesus the King. But this year we're all celebrating separately in our own homes. Our celebrations are inevitably tinged with real sadness for the loss of contact with our physical church community over much of the past year. Although there's light at the end of the tunnel, for the moment at least, we are still living in strange times. Yes, and in these strange times, Palm Sunday is something of a strange festival. The crowds outside Jerusalem went wild with their shouting. This was the moment many of them had been waiting for. At last, their dreams were going to come true. But in the middle of it all, as we read in Luke's account of this momentous event, Jesus wasn't singing or cheering. He was in tears. Yes, the crowd's dreams were indeed coming true, but not in the way that they'd imagined. You see, Jesus was not the king that they'd expected. He wasn't the great warrior king that many of them had wanted. He didn't raise an army and ride into town at its head. No, he was riding on a donkey. He was a servant king. What's it all about? What did Jesus think he was doing? Well, there's a bigger story going on at Palm Sunday than most people at the time could see. We have the benefit of the Bible telling us the rest. We can see the journey that Jesus took to the cross. But actually, the clues were there at the time. The king arriving into Jerusalem was riding a donkey, not a war horse. As the crowd waved their palm branches and shouted, Hosanna! Many were expecting a leader who would fight their battles and liberate them from the control of the Roman Empire. What they got was a very different kind of king, a servant king. As we know, the week took a, the week took a very different turn and in a matter of a few days, Jesus would be executed as a criminal, silent before those who humiliated and tortured him. In many ways, the climax of Palm Sunday comes in verse 8, where we read, Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. You don't spread cloaks on the road, especially in the dusty Middle East, simply for a friend. You do it for royalty. And you don't cut branches off trees or foliage from fields to wave in the street simply because you're excited. No, you do it because you're welcoming a king. The first point Mark wants to make in all this is absolutely clear, namely that from chapter 8 onwards, the disciples have believed that Jesus is the true and rightful King of the Jews on his way to the capital city to be hailed as such. This is that moment. The shout of the crowd brings this out exactly. Hosanna is a Hebrew word which mixes exuberant praise to God with the prayer that God will save his people and do it right away. <coughs> the beginning and end of their joyful chant is taken from Psalm 118, verses 25 and 26, which is itself all about going up to Jerusalem and the temple. We read, Lord, 
save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. We know, however, that the crowd that cheered Jesus later turned on him. But before condemning those who acclaim Jesus, before changing their tune later, I would want to ask where I would have found myself in the story. Surely fickle affections and short-lived commitments are not the sole prerogative of the people who lived in Jerusalem in AD 33. <clears throat> the terrible truth is that ordinary, good, hopeful religious people are easily swayed by the power of expediency and short-term gain. I really do wonder where I would have been. Verses 12 to 25 see Jesus announcing God's condemnation of the temple in Jerusalem, which had, becoming, had become nothing short of corrupt. Although historically God had prom promised to bless Israel, he could not overlook unjust and corrupt behaviour. That's why the early chapters of Jeremiah are all about this particular issue, and it includes a quotation that comes here in verse 17, where we read, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Part of Jesus' charge against his fellow Jews was that Israel as a whole had neglected its God-given purpose to be the light of the world. As with the parable of the fig tree, which also features in these few verses, Jesus' only word for Israel's religious practices was one of judgment. The temple sacrificial system actually became totally redundant when Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. Jesus came to give his life as a ransom for many, a ransom for all who believe and trust in him. It is through this, not through sacrifices in an increasingly immoral and corrupt temple, that God's kingdom came to fruition. This, my friends, is what Good Friday Christ's sacrifice on the cross is all about. To conclude, <clears throat> I want to come back to Palm Sunday itself. The crowds cheered and lauded Jesus when he entered Jerusalem. The same crowds turned on him when he was not the military conqueror they expected. I think this passage raises questions for us all about our own following of Jesus and our loyalty to him. Are we ready to obey his orders, even when they puzzle us? Are we ready to go out of our way to honour him, finding in our own lives the equivalents of cloaks to spread on the road before him and branches to wave? Or, and I certainly ask myself this, or, have we so domesticated and so sanitised our Christian commitment, our devotion to Jesus himself, that we look on him simply as someone to help us through the various things we plan to do anyway? Someone to provide us with comforting religious experiences. I wonder. Beware if we merely invoke God to back up our own ambitions and our own aspirations, or if, like so many, we imagine him in the spirit of the age, we imagine that we can find him in the spirit of the age, we simply can't. If we go down this route, we are simply chasing shadows. On the other hand, who knows what might happen if each one of us we're to approach Holy Week, Good Friday and Easter Day 2021, praying humbly for the powerful, fresh wind of the Holy Spirit to blow into that combination of cultural pressure and pers personal aspirational or ambition so that we might each one share in the sufferings of the Messiah and come through 
into the new life he longs to give us. Then we really would be singing our hosannas and we really would be shouting them with gusto. Amen. Well, thank you, David, for that. And in response to it, we're going to sing, I guess, what is one of my favourite um, uh, hymns, that particularly for this time of year. And I've always been struck by the way the, the real contrast is captured in this verse. Let me just read it before we sing it. Sometimes they crowd his way and his sweet praises sing, resounding all the day, hosannas to their king. Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death they thirst and cry. Well, here might we stay and sing, Never was love, dear King, never was grief like yours. You are our friend and our Lord. We sing together. my days could gladly spend. Well, indeed, during this coming week, there are lots of opportunities for us to spend time with our Lord Jesus Christ and with his word. Uh, from Monday to Wednesday, uh, some of our church family are going to be leading us through John's account of the Passion, helping us just to enter into the story 
of those momentous events. And then there'll be a short service to mark our Lord's Last Supper on Maundy Thursday. Uh, we've got an online service Good Friday morning and then the choir are going to be singing for us uh, again online on Good Friday evening. Uh, over the Easter weekend, um, our growing families have uh, set up a, a little trail um, within the churchyard. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to see details about that on the, um, on the fellowship post. But a way to, as families to take our children through the Easter stories and help them to enter in and to um, discover it afresh as they follow these various points around our churchyard. And then, of course, on Easter morning, uh, we gather uh, online to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, during this week, uh, do spend time with our Lord and with his word, but also do spend time catching up with one another um, as things begin to open up just a little bit more, uh, maybe an opportunity just to knock on someone's door and say hello, and just to encourage those, especially those that have been living alone during this time. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst with you and with all those whom you love, now and always. Amen. Thank you.